Clark, hammer. These guy players coming over. The F2 definition would be unnecessary and excessive. So the WNBA has never been profitable to my knowledge. Never. Like ever. There has been more or less loss of money, but it is completely subsidized by the NBA. This is not a secret. However, you don't really hear that being discussed on the major sports channels. They'll talk about the equal pay stuff and comparatively speaking to, and it seems like a misdirection, right? They're compared to the NBA and what they're making. Uh, they're, they've been talking about their their work conditions as well, type of stadiums they've been playing in, their flying commercial, all those good things. And it seems to be more or less a misdirection to talk about the crux. It's a very fascinating thing because sports media doesn't talk about like the facts of the matter. And that is that the WNBA is welfare statism, essentially, um, because the NBA completely subsidizes it. Um, if the NBA were to go under, they'd go under uh, for sure. They cannot sustain themselves and they lose money effectively. So even though they're investing in it, well, it's still losing money. That said, they got a little boost with the Caitlin Clark phenomena. You can even throw the Angel Reese's of the world, though she's not nearly as big as much as she might like to be uh, as of a name. But that dynamic in them coming from college uh, to the pros has for sure increased the popularity of the sport. Uh, there's been instances where, you, and it's more mainly Caitlin Clark because there was what the combined record of that. I can't remember what stadium that was that they were in where they were playing another atrocious WNBA team and that sold out. Um, and uh, that proves it's all, as far as the ticket sales, um, they had to actually move it into another stadium, which by itself proves that she's the draw. Now, all that, Though, despite the boost, and my colleagues over at Blaze covered this, despite the boost, they're still expected to lose another $50 million. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said in 2018, the WNBA typically lose, loses $10 million annually. With the Basketball Association reportedly taking in $180 to $200 million uh, the previous season. I'm talking about the uh, WNBA. It is still a fraction or just a fraction of 10 billion earned by the NBA. They'll never be that. And I don't think it's realistic to expect that, but given the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver said in 2018, as we just discussed how much they're losing, um, the, uh, that would amount to an opus of 260 million in losses since the league's inception in 1997. The report by the Washington post detailed that the WNBA is expected to lose 50 million from the current season citing two unnamed sources who are aware of the financial figures. The sources told the outlet that they did not have permission to publicly discuss the league's financial status. Now, we always knew that they were losing money. How much is going to be up for dispute and up for debate? Uh, they had the benefit, I don't want to say, of cooking the books, maybe not the proper term, but moving money around. So what this does say is that I don't, if they can't make money now, it's hard to say if they'll ever be able to make money. I, I think maybe it's impossible. It's a tall order. It's a, it, it's, it can't be done. Because are they going to get a bigger boost? A lot was going for it. You had that collegiate experience that was happening there where I think for the first time you had a lot of games that were even more watched than the uh, NCAA men's basketball games because of the Caitlin Clarks of the world and the villain stories and everything that happened with that. So you have, because Caitlin now goes into the WNBA, you have more eyes than they probably ever had. And still, right now, it's set to lose reportedly $50 million. And I wish, if nothing else, man, bro, I just wish that that was the conversation that we were having. When you, when at least the economics of the league, not, well, they're flying commercial or private. That, that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's subsidized by someone else. All that is going to be subsidized by another league, the men's league. So whether they're moving up in luxury, it's still not making them money because, well, the, the, the league itself is, is just not profitable. So I, I don't know if they ever shut that league down. I think there's a, there's a lot of narrative that's around it. Um, but I think the, the I wish the women of it of the league understood that because even when you hear some of them talk about it, they're like, yeah, we're not asking for what the men get, but we're asking for revenue shares. And I, what, what, what revenue? Like, 
okay, maybe you are making money, but you're losing money. So whether the ticket sales and everything and Jersey sales and everything amounts to a hundred million dollars, they're spending $150 million. I'm not saying that those are the exact numbers, but you get what, what I'm saying. So you have no money to be none of that. That's still a misdirection is the point I'm making. I guess tough bros tough. That's all I can say. Thanks for watching. Be sure to head over to Ripperverse.com to check out our comic book company. We have books, plenty of merchandise, and even some glorious animations from Ripperverse Studios. 